Hey guys, today we're going to take a look at the Phoenix Max 360 XL 16 liter electrostatic sprayer. Uh, this sprayer is basically something you'd want to use in larger enclosed or open spaces, uh, recreational facilities, restaurants, athletic fields. There's a variety of uses. The 16 liter capacity can go quite far. Uh, you can do hundreds of square meters depending on how much coverage you're trying to get on uh, the, the surfaces that you're spraying. The runtime is about six hours. It is a lithium ion battery, uh, 12 volt, eight amp, I believe. And it's rechargeable by plugging the adapter into the base. I'll show you that after. Uh, so you get about a six hour runtime, which is a good chunk of a work day. Uh, as far as the uh, fluid, it depends on the coverage, how long, uh, you'll last between refills. Uh, 16 liters can go quite far. You could easily do a, let's say a small restaurant multiple times before you're going to go through the capacity of the tank. So uh, what I'm going to do is go through what comes in the package, how to assemble it, some precautions before, during, and after use, and, uh, and then show you this quickly in operation purpose of an electrostatic sprayer, as you probably heard by now, is that it electrically charges water in the sprayer or as it comes out of the tip. And that electrically charged mist attracts itself to either neutral or oppositely charged surfaces. So one of the benefits of that is that as you're spraying an object, let's say I wanted to spray this box, as I'm spraying the object, I do not need to walk around it and spray the different surfaces. I can aim my sprayer at the object and the mist will actually envelop the object and uh, attach itself to all sides. So if you're spraying, for example, chairs uh, or uh, railings, you do not have to spray all sides of the chairs or railings. Spray at the chair spray at the railings and let the mist do the work for you. Uh, it will again uh, get attracted to that oppositely or neutral charged surface. So uh, let's go through what comes in the box and how to assemble this unit. In the box you'll find an adapter, the lithium ion battery. You will find two straps for attaching it to this so that you can attach it to your back like a backpack. You'll get the container with the base with part of the hose pre-attached. Uh, this contains the uh, diaphragm pump. It contains the electrostatic generator, um, switch, uh, port, all of that. Um, you'll get your trigger handle with lock, wand with extension, an additional bag with uh, washers that, uh, just extra washers. There are already washers installed in many of these components. A double nozzle tip. In, inside this cover, you'll find your cone tip, which is my favorite of all the tips. This one allows for a much more controlled cone spray, conical spray, outward away from you. Um, the double tip and a single uh, straight tip with no shroud. So you have a few options. I never use these two, but um, let's go through. Oh, and the instruction sheet showing you what comes in the uh, kit, goes through the assembly and operation, warranty, and also the specs on the unit. So, very simple. You start by, oh, make sure your unit is off. It will come to you with the battery charged already. Uh, you do not want to flip this unit on before you're ready. So um, uh, make sure the unit is in the off position. I've already filled this tank with water, but in your case, you're going to get a unit that hasn't been used yet. And you're going to partially fill this tank with water, swish that water around, empty the tank and dry it out. Then 
you can reinsert your strainer and fill it with your disinfectant fluid. Uh, I've already done the uh, pre-rinse process, so I've already filled this with a couple liters of fluid. I insert my strainer, put the cover back on tightly, grab the end of the hose, make sure it has its rubber uh, seal here, attach it to the trigger, and make sure that it's very uh, snug. You do not want a water leak. A water leak would allow the uh, electrostatically charged water to get, uh, you know, make this handle wet and basically give you a, a good zap, sort of like what you would get from uh, electrostatic charge on your feet from uh, walking across a carpet. Uh, it, you know, not pleasant for some people. So make sure that that is attached. Make sure you have your O-ring in the wand, attach your wand, and again, the entire time making sure that your trigger lock is engaged. There are wings on the uh, wand to allow you to get it nice and snug by hand. You don't need a tool for this. This can all be done by hand. And then the last part is, uh, of the wand anyway, is making sure that you attach your tip, whichever tip you want to use. In this case, I am using the conical tip. And what you want to do is make sure that the tip is oriented away from the trigger. So whichever way your trigger is facing, you want the, wand, the, the tip to point away from you. Uh, you don't want it like that. That makes no sense, right? Point away from you. Uh, in this case, I've also got the wand, wand extension collapsed. Uh, you can unscrew this fitting and extend the wand out another, I'd say, 50 to 75% in length. So now we've got everything snug. When you're not using the wand, you can place it into its holder on the side of the tank. It's got a nice tight fit. You can actually store the unit like this. Never store it filled with liquid. Always make sure you empty it and dry it out. Dry the outside of the unit. Keep this thing clean and dry when you're not using it. Okay, so on the back side, you take your two straps and each strap comes with a yellow buckle that you can attach to the recesses on the bottom of your tank. You'll see one on each side of the base, the black base. So this is attached. Leave the strap for a moment. Take your other buckle with the clip, attach to the other side. Make sure that they're snugged up. Take your strap, come under the handle, over the slots, and then come back through the slots toward the back of the unit. Give yourself some slack in the buckle, like so. And then place your strap through into the buckle and out the other side. This is identical to the kind of process that you would use for a child's backpack or hiking pack or anything like that. Same exact process. You've probably done it a million times. Uh, those of us with slightly fatter fingers, it's a little bit more challenging sometimes, but um, make sure that's secure. Same thing, under the handle, over the slot, back through the slot, slack in my buckle, into the buckle with the strap, and out the other side. And what you're looking to do is try to make these uh, equal length. One sec here. My fingers always have a difficulty grabbing that last bit. You wanna make sure these are at about the same 
these buckles, as you can see, are the same height, same distance from the top. So you know these straps are now equal in length, so that the unit is going to be on your back equally. Now, never start this unit on a surface. If you do, you do run the risk of giving yourself a little zap. I always put the unit on my back first and then reach around and start it. Uh, and I don't get zapped that way. Uh, it, remember, it's electrically charging the fluid in the tank. As far as precautions, you never want to operate this unit wet on the outside. Always keep it clean and dry. Anytime it gets wet on the outside, uh, there is the possibility that the that electric charge, that static electricity, will make its way to your uh, hands or uh, you know anything that's that's touching the body that is now wet on the outside. Um, I have bare hands in this video, but I strongly recommend you wear rubber gloves with this unit. Uh, that will ensure that should the handle get wet, the trigger get wet while you're using it, that you're not going to get that little zap. So do make sure that you actually wear rubber gloves at all times when you're using one of these electrostatic sprayers. Now, uh, also, don't operate this unit if you have any kind of medical devices uh, like a pacemaker. Uh, you don't want that electrostatically charged fluid uh, anywhere near you. Uh, usually I think the recommendation is about 10 feet away from anyone that has a medical device that uh, could be affected by the electrostatic charge. So that means either the person operating the unit or if you are operating this unit around other people. Always make sure that you're keeping a distance of at least 10 feet away from anyone that has those medical devices. Um, also, don't use the unit around flammable liquids. You do not want the possibility that the charge will in any way ignite those flammable liquids. So do not use this unit around flammable liquids. Now, uh, it's very easy to use. Uh, I take the wand off. It's not easy to take this wand on and off when this unit is on your back. It's great to store it later, but take the wand off the unit. Put it someplace where it's not going to fall down and break on you. And uh, now place this unit on your back one strap at a time. Now, I put, I'm about 6'2 uh, and 200 pounds. I put one strap on. I reach around to the other strap oh, and make sure <laughs> make sure your clip by the way is in tightly because you'll do what I just did okay so you can see that this sits nice and high on the back and the pads uh, completely cover my shoulders around so it's pretty comfortable to wear. I would not recommend filling this completely with fluid. It would weigh about 40 pounds. You can do it. It can hold a full 16 liters, but I do not recommend it. Fill it about halfway and the unit will weigh about 25 pounds or so uh, with a half fill, uh, eight liters of fluid. And it's still enough to do several hundred square feet of space. Now, I've got the unit on my back secure. I've got my wand appropriately oriented. My trigger guard is on. I can start the unit by reaching around. Let's see here. <laughs> reaching around to the uh, power button and turn the unit on. And then uh, once the unit is on, I can release this trigger guard and begin spraying. So. As soon as you turn it on, you can actually hear the pump running. It's charging the fluid in the tank. Take the trigger guard off. I'm going to put this aside. I don't want this to get wet. And now, hopefully you can see this on video, but oh, let me make sure this is tight enough. Okay. 
one moment. I should have double checked that. Let's turn the unit off. Okay, so let us turn the unit on. There we go. Make sure those connections are snug. You can see how easy it was. Even for me, I've done this a million times, and it's very simple to forget to snug them up enough, and it will drip from there, and you don't want that happening. And it's also why I say wear the rubber gloves, because in the event that that happens, I'm used to that little electrostatic feel, that tingly uh, feel, but you may not be accustomed to it and you might not like it. So, when you pull the trigger, it emits a spray, a fog, and you can actually now point that at the surfaces that you're trying to disinfect. And when you do, you do not need to go up and under, you don't need to do any of that. You point at the surface, let the mist do the work it's going to wrap itself around all of these surfaces onto the other side so that you get complete coverage. Spray your surface, whatever it is that you're trying to spray. And when you're done, turn your unit off. You're going to put this wand down somewhere where it's clean and convenient. You don't want to put, get the nozzle dirty. Take the unit off of your back carefully, put it down, put your wand back in its holder, and take it to wherever you are going to empty the liquid, the, the contents. Uh, you can also do that on your back, obviously, and uh, take it off your back at that disposal area. But uh, empty the liquids and dry the unit so that you can store it for its next use. So uh, anyway, this is the, again, it's the Phoenix Max 360 XL electrostatic sprayer. And uh, hopefully now you understand the uh, use, the assembly, and some of the precautions for using this unit. Thank you for watching and uh, good luck with your disinfectant uh, spraying.